Hello. Hello from the Cotswolds. Oh, there you are. Oh, they've got some good cream teas here. Have you actually stopped for a cream tea? No, but I can see people having cream teas. <laughs> That's just as good. Oh, it must I, be. I did that thing like the Oliver film where I just sort of put my, my smudgy, dirty five days worth of dirt hands against the glass and, and like lick the glass a little bit while they people with red trousers sip tea and discuss <laughs> the Conservative government and tax evasion. It was... It, it, I love the Cotswolds, and I also hate it. Um, I take it then, because we're on day five now, I can't, I can't actually believe that this is still going on. Um, I but... know, it's like an abusive relationship, isn't it? It is, it it's is. Like, you're, you're like, why haven't you left? Why haven't you left? Yeah, I, I just, you know, we're only still running out of habit. There's, there's, you know, I actually thought today that if this carries on like this, I'd probably only give it a couple more hundred miles and maybe just stop. <sighs> So, um, so what has today then? So you've been going into the Cotswolds. I take it it's been more scenic. Scenic is one thing. Yeah, it's ever so pretty. I've got got to say the Cotswolds is just staggeringly beautiful, um, and every town is got a name like Chipping Fartbury or Slarty Bart Fasterville. <laughs> Slarty um, Bart Faster. <laughs> <laughs> but they're um, they're beautifully. Every single town or village looks like it's been used in a BBC period drama. Right. Like, even down to the cars, I think everyone drives 1912 carriages. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. How do you choreograph an entire town to not have, you know, a wide red Ford Fiesta parked somewhere? And it's amazing. Such a beautiful place. So um, has the beauty of the place been in stark contrast with your um, uh, attitude and mindset today? What a day. Has it? Oh, wow. I see... <laughs> So oh, wow. when we when we last left you, um, we were, we were yeah. cut off and we and then we couldn't connect with each other. Um, we couldn't know. Um, what 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 has been your journey today then? Um, let, both both me, physically yeah. and mentally. Let me catch you up with last night, and then we'll talk about today, which has been a proper humdinger. <laughs> um, so last night, shortly after I'd spoken to you, uh, I knew I was basically moving through the whole night. Yeah. And I wouldn't get to the CP till maybe half four, four a.m. was my estimate to Lindley on the text. <laughs> so I thought I'll smash some Red Bull. So right. I got two of those big cans, yeah, and just smashed them. Right. And uh, my friend Jenny phoned me about an hour later, going, "I'm looking at you on the tracker, and you seem to be going quite quickly." <laughs> and my response. My response was, and Jenny will back this up, I was, I was on the phone going, I am a running god! I was, I was doing about seven minute miles and just smashing it on going, I am invincible! And I was just shot. It was, and Jenny was like, you've got to slow down, you're going to injure yourself. So, so, and I'm like, but I'm so fast! <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't do Red Bull very often and they were the big cans and... Um, Oh, wow. For about two hours, I was David Hellard. It was amazing. <laughs> it's what it's like to move quickly. I'd forgotten. Um, and then, of course, uh, the Red Bull ran out uh, rather aggressively. Uh, so then about two hours later, I looked like a heroin addict snibbling by an oak tree going, <laughs> I've, lost my ma- I've lost my magic powers. I can't move and I'm cold. Um, so, yeah, all in all, uh, I'd managed to, in a bleary-minded idiot... When I packed up in the tent that morning, yeah. I, I let me get this the right way around. I've got a, a roll-out therma rest I sleep on that I leave at the CPs, and um, some, and a jacket I wear like a that I don't really tend to take with me. Yeah. And um, I took the jacket and the therma rest and left my waterproof trousers and the things I actually wanted. And out here, when you're moving through the night with all the crops. Yeah. You really want waterproof trousers. Oh, of so, course. Oh, yeah, dear. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, dear, did I get wet legs. Really cold. It was miserable. But um, I watched the sunrise as I came into Stratford. And uh, you, but do batters have a, a love of reggae? They do. To help them move. They do. But I have found, I have found the perfect song to power walk to. I might even do it like a CD collection called Power Walk Ballads. Um, but uh, being it's a Monarch's Way theme, I, uh, I, I had Prince, Prince's song Get Off, playing in the pit. 
and I stuck it on repeat, and it's got this beat that's kind of do 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 and um, and it's got this sort of drum beat, this you know thumping trumpy, and it's absolutely in rhythm with the cadence when I'm power walking. Right. Perfect. So yep, Prince and Red Bull. That's the key to um, Prince and Red tracking Bull. Tracking out decent mileage. And so um, and then so that you got into how long were you in the in the checkpoint for? Checkpoint. I got there at half four, uh, and I left. <laughs> Did I leave at half six or half seven? I don't remember. It's all a blur. I'm sure it was, about seven. Half seven. I'm sure it was about half seven on that in in uh, Lily's uh, blog post about it. Yeah, Lily always does a a sort of captain's log supplemental about me because there's the race <laughs> and then there's sweeper at the back, which is me. I'm basically the instead of a camel, I think we we just have one round head at the back. <laughs> You're the sweeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's always been how many hours am I in front of the round head? Um, and most times I've been leaving the checkpoints between three and six hours in front of sudden death. Yeah. Um, and it was the same this morning, basically. Um, but the guys had a, a tough time getting through the Cotswolds last night. You know, they're only moving at about two miles an hour, bless them. Yeah. But um, the hills are epic. Uh, you know, so you, it's hard work. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah. And then today, wow. I, sometimes you make massive jumps forward. Yeah. In yourself. Yeah. Um, it might be in your running ability. It might be um, personally or personality traits. But I can tell you, I was listening to a, a, a running podcast today about a guy who did the Thames Pass 100. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he was, he was talking about all his inner demons and how he was <laughs> verbally abusing this really smiley guy who, who'd driven through the night having run for three days prior to that, having 150 miles. Um. And I, was, and I was listening to that thinking, if you think that behaviour is bad at 70 miles, oh boy, the 180 demon <laughs> is like nothing you've ever seen. Oh, I can't imagine, and... man. I can't imagine. It must, <laughs> you, what's going through your head right now? I just don't, I don't know. I, Ultra Lucifer turned up. <laughs> and uh, Ultra Lucifer turned up at 11am today at right. exactly the same time that I started to get heat stroke again and completely crash, like physically speed dropped off. Just everything became like glue. Um, I couldn't hardly move. I was too hot. Yeah. I would have absolutely told you today in a court of law that it was 35 Celsius <laughs> and 100% humidity. Absolutely, <laughs> seriously, without a doubt. So I had a shocker. Yeah. And um, I got to this house called... I don't know, fiddly dillip house. <laughs> Lots of old people go, they get very excited. Someone I haven't heard of had a poo there once. And uh, I think, I've got to get out of this heat. I've, I'm melting down. So I just sort of wandered into the cafe area to get water. And despite the fact that I'm surrounded by elderly people who can hardly move, I stand out as somebody who's quite clearly in quite a bad way. Yeah. And I was. And in fact... Um, one of the people that worked there just came straight over and said, I'm calling an ambulance. You look terrible. And I, it, I did that thing runners do. It's like, nah, I'm absolutely fine. Don't worry about. But you're know, like, but in, internally you're going, please, please. If I get, yeah. if I get bumped because yeah. you call an ambulance, that's not my fault then. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I, I took some time out under, a, under an oak tree to cool the hell down. I was so fuddled. I got into a sleeping bag. Which is not good. <laughs> If you're trying to get out of the sun and cool down, getting into a sleeping bag is a terrible idea, which gives you an idea of how bad your brain is. Oh, my goodness. That, yeah. I bet, I, no. And I bet no, you, anyway, if, I, you're in, if you're literally in, like, the equivalent of a National Trust um, uh, tea room, everyone must have thought you were foreign as well, which must have been awful. Yeah, um, remember, I've got my short shorts on still trying to stay cool. <laughs> so I look German. Yeah, with the weird beard, uh, I just look like a German tourist. But... Um, so, yeah, that was terrible. So I nursed it. I, I messaged Lindley uh, saying, uh, I'm having a bit of a bad time. I'm going to take some time out of the sun. I then just, I tried to walk again, and within an hour, within 45 minutes, I was basically back at meltdown again. So I massively loaded up on water, and I got to a place called Chipping Campton or something, I don't know. And uh, in this incredibly beautiful posh high street where everybody wears red trousers and everybody's over the age of 100. Yeah. Um, they had this beautiful ex 
I don't know, like a folly or something in the middle of the high street, you know, where you can just sit on some benches. And I just laid down there on these cobblestones that were beautifully cool and just laid there for two hours, got out of the sun until I sorted myself out yeah. and just drank, drank loads of fluids, ate some food, nodded off a little bit. I was actually genuinely concerned because I had a sandwich in front of me and a drink. I was a bit worried people were going to throw money at me. <laughs> like, just <laughs> give me a quid or two. I was, and then I thought, well, ah, fuck it, I'll take the money, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, that, so the long and the short of it is, I'm texting Lindley and I'm not getting anything back. And and Ultra Lucifer is saying, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't, yeah. He just wants the other one. He wants the two at the front to win. Yeah, exactly. So you're going, well, this is outrageous. You know, why isn't he at my beck and call? Um, You know, know, this is genuinely dangerous. He should be coming out every few hours just to check up on me because I'm important. I'm a princess. You know, I'm I'm 30% of this race, damn it. At least up until, I don't know, tomorrow. And, um, yeah, I was just a nightmare. And then I was running low on power for various reasons, mainly to do with talking to you on the phone. And um, <laughs> then he said he'd come out and, and switch over some power packs for me. And he arrives at the car park. <clears throat> and I almost don't recognise the asshole that Lindley got out of the car to. But, oh, really? Uh, yeah. I, I just... It, 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 it was almost like I was playing a role. And, and, it was... <laughs> and so Lily just stood there, like, looking at me going, oh, you dickhead. And I'm like, ah, princess this, ah, how dare you that? You're putting my life in danger. <laughs> <You know. laughs> well, obviously, Lindley... you must have felt it. You must have felt it at uh-huh. the time. I mean, th- to be fair. Did, but Lily, in the space of 10 seconds, just bitch slapped me but it, he did exactly what I needed to do which was you know you're a prick right you, you know you're the prick at the moment and then suddenly Ultra Lucifer was gone and I was stood there going oh my god I'm the world's biggest bell end you know and, and this race is nuts and you get ultra tired and everything's different and every day is a learning experience and you know I, I pride myself a lot about talking about people that I meet who teach me new stuff with running or I learn new techniques or, or whatever. And basically, Lindley just spent half an hour just going through what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> and, and I sat there like a, like a child and I was like, do you know what? He's absolutely right. He's right about that. You know, he, he'd say something and I'm like, yeah, no, no, that, that's right. Uh, and he's like, and you've got your clothing wrong for the last two days. And I'm like, yep, no, you're right. I, I, I take lots of big jackets on the hot days and I, and I take my shorts days when it's raining i i really have got this wrong quite a lot but um it was cool. and, and maxine sat there and you know she's got massive amounts of experience and she said you got to stop taking the salt dude you got you got to stop taking the salt um and i've been taking a lot of precision hydration salt yeah um and uh sorry i'm having a navigation nightmare oh that's not good what's going on there Hang on. Um, and, um, you know, I would have sworn it was 35 degrees today. And Maxine's going, why are you melting down at 23 Celsius? You crossed the desert, you bellend. And I'm like, well, it's mega hot. And, you know, it's, you don't know, man. I've been out there. <laughs> you don't know, man. You're just sipping gin and tonics on the trail, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I've just, I've just had a massive education lesson in a car park. And um, Maxine's been brilliant and said, look, this is what you're doing wrong. You've got to stop taking salt entirely. It's got to stop completely. Y- your salt is destroying you. Um, and Lindley's like, you've got to sort your attitude out. You're a fucking princess. You know, we haven't had a loose of broth the other two. You know, so again, more mind games. You know, they're just getting me in trouble with dad yeah. now. Um, and I've just had such a humbling moment in the car park. And I feel terrible, like a complete cock end. And I've learned loads in one hour. You know, I've learned a shitload about my personality flaws, which are many, even when I'm not tired. But, oh, dearie boy, when I've, when I've done some distance, have I got some personality failures, you know. And I'd be the first to say, well, I never blame other people. I always say it's me. I always take responsibility. But I just wasn't taking responsibility. So there you go. 
Oh, no, it sounds like it sounds like some sort of like bloody therapy session. This this is not this isn't fun in any way. I wanted a fight to ensue or something like that. I don't I don't care if you've grown as a person. I want you to I want you to be fisticuffs. I want there to be drama. This is not what we're looking for. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to stop this and re-record it. Let me tell you, people that have run two hundred miles, a fight is gonna be the dullest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> The slowest. <laughs> It'll be a guy leaning on to the other guy going, look, I'm leaning on you. What are you going to do?